This question, what it means to live a good life, is an ancient question. Aristotle, one of the most important thinkers in the Western, in the history of Western philosophy, asked this question, and so did his teacher Plato, and so did Plato's teacher Socrates. What does it mean to live a good life? So today we're going to take a look at what his answer was and try to understand why this question is so important and also be able to ask questions to Aristotle and ask our own questions about what it means to live a good life. So as I just said, Aristotle, an important thinker, and his importance is felt right through the Middle Ages and into the Renaissance. Aristotle is known as the first scientist. He invented the scientific method. He um, really invented most of the sciences. And when a great mind such as Aristotle's turns to questions of ethics, everybody pays attention. And uh, just an interesting uh, piece of information, Aristotle was tutor to Alexander the Great. So. This is not an incidental question. What it means to live a good life is actually, according to Aristotle, a political question. Because if I know what is good for me, then chances are that I will be able to establish what is good for a greater community and thereby make laws according to which we can all live. So the answer to the question, what is the good, is going to be an answer by which we can guide ourselves and guide our behavior and guide our action. But what's that one thing that we all desire? What does it really mean to live a good life? Nelson Mandela thought that freedom was worth 27 years of his life. And he sacrificed a quarter of his life to a greater cause. Mother Teresa sacrificed her entire life this woman's life was about care for others, care for the good, and how could she live a good life, according to her, if other people were suffering and she wasn't doing anything to help? And yet, most people might easily answer money and power. Everybody wants to have money. Everybody wants to be powerful. Nobody wants to be penniless and powerless. But is that really the answer to what it means to live a good life? All the billions of people on the planet who live in under two dollars a day are their lives not good is there not anything more to the good life than money well according to Aristotle and here's where he gets interesting he divides the good into two parts or into two things and defines good as a relative good and a non relative good so a relative good is something that we use for something else like money it's not good in and of itself. You can't eat it and wear it to keep warm, but you use it to get what you need. A non-relative good is something that's good in and of itself, like a lake. You don't have to use a lake for it to be good. It's good just because it's there, because it's beautiful. It doesn't have to have a function beyond just its own existence, like you, your life, your life is protected in the Canadian Charter. The lives of all people are protected in the Canadian Charter. Whether you're a criminal, a powerful person, we deem all lives to be good and worthy. So what's the number one good we all desire? Every single person who ever lived wants to be happy, according to Aristotle. And this is the one desire that unites us all. This is the one thing that we all want. Happiness for the ancient Greeks was not a psychological state of mind. They called it eudaimonia, and that means flourishing, like a flower flourishes, self-actualizing, realizing your potential, being the best that you can be, achieving, accomplishing things. So happiness or eudaimonia is not so much something that you feel as it is a declaration that you make when you look back on your life or back on something and say, yes, that thing is good. For example, honor. You don't feel honorable at the moment, but you might look back on your behavior and say, yes, that was honorable behavior. 
Happiness for Aristotle is something that should be desired in and of itself. We choose relative goods or means to happiness and we choose them for the sake of happiness. Happiness is therefore its own goal. For Aristotle, every single thing had a purpose, a function. A rock has a function, a plant has a function, you have a purpose. Something that functions well, we call it good. And living is functioning and living well is functioning well. Therefore, a virtuous life, a good life, is one that is lived according to its purpose. So human excellence is when we act in accordance with our purpose. But what's our purpose? Happiness, for Aristotle, remember, or eudaimonia, is the activity of the soul. And don't think of soul in the religious sense. Think of it in terms of a mind. So happiness is when our mind is in conformity or consistent or living according to the best virtues. And that's something that we can train. That's a habit that we have. And the what is the nature of the soul, the nature of the human mind, and how are we different from animals? Well, an animal is non-rational. An animal is governed by its appetites and its instincts. It doesn't stop and think about things. It just acts when it has a desire. And people are rational, and we have a mind, and we can choose. We have intellectual virtues like knowledge and wisdom and understanding. So for Aristotle, it's all about the virtues, the virtues of character. These are things that we learn. We are socialized by our society, by our parents, and we learn from our friends what virtues we will live by. Virtues is a kind of an old fashioned word, but you can understand it by thinking about moral values and moral principles. And some examples of Aristotle's virtues, there's a long list of them, uh, were courage, temperance, patience, truthfulness, and modesty. And some intellectual virtues, as I just said, were knowledge and wisdom and right judgment. But these things are not learned, uh, these things are not innate, they're not, we don't come by them naturally, we have to learn them. So for Aristotle, the good life, moral virtue, is a state of character. This is something that we choose, obviously with training and habit, but this is not instinctive. So we need to have free will to choose to live this way. What's the best way to do this? Well, we live according to what Aristotle called the golden mean. So we try to aim for the middle, for moderation, and we avoid excess and we avoid deficiency. The virtues are best when they are lived in a moderate way. So if you take the virtue of, say for example, courage, well, courage, when it is in excess, is rash. It's fine to be brave and courage, uh, courageous, but it's foolish and life-threatening to rush headlong into a dangerous situation and be rash about it when you don't have to be. It's also, in his deficient side, cowardice when we don't have enough of courage. So every single virtue that we have has to be lived in a moderate way. In order to exercise our virtues and to choose the moderate path, we have to be able to make a voluntary choice to deliberate from reason and from thinking about things, not from anger and passion. Virtue is not a question of feeling, it's a question of rationality. So therefore, the good life for Aristotle or eudaimonia is a life that is lived according to the highest virtues. And we need to be able to choose these virtues. We need to be able to be free to choose these virtues and to be responsible for their choices. So the surprising conclusion for Aristotle is that children can't make a claim to the good life or even to happiness. They might experience pleasure, but they don't experience eudaimonia because eudaimonia is something that you 
can only claim once you look back on your life and you can judge that you did live a virtuous life according to the highest principles. This is a little bit surprising for some people when they discover that the good life or happiness is A, not a feeling, and B, not something that anybody can claim. And so you need to think about this. How do you want to live your life so that when you are mature and in your adult years, you can look back on your younger years and say, yes, I lived a virtuous life.